Then I guess then I, I won't guess tell I you about, about your father. father. Did you all lie to me? All of you in that room? We were all told to stick to the story. To protect someone very important. Oh, I know you're confused. Who wouldn't be? We have something in common. Did I ever tell you that my father played for the Denver Broncos? My dad was a ginger! Back in the early days of South Park, Matt Stone and Trey Parker dangled one question over fans' heads. Who is the father of Eric Cartman? This question was brought to the forefront in the season 1 finale, before being resolved in the season 2 premiere. We'll not be seen tonight, so that we can bring you the following special presentation. Before being resolved in the second episode of season 2. Except, not really. That was a lie. The true identity of Cartman's father would be kept under wraps for 185 more episodes, over the course of 12 years, until it was finally answered in what is hands down my favorite two-part episode of South Park to this very day, which just happens to be the two-parter banned from the United States. This is a story of tragedy, how Eric Cartman's quest for truth was undermined by his own actions. Because Cartman's father was killed, cooked into chili, and fed to Cartman's half-brother by Cartman himself. That's right, Scott Tennerman's dad is Eric's father, and Scott Tennerman is his brother, elevating his habit of self-destruction to a brand new level. This is a deep dive into one of the most infamous events in South Park history, a saga that will forever live in my memory as one of the greatest stories they've ever told. This is the story of 200 and 201, the time South Park almost started a war. <coughs> what do you mean Bloom's already made a video on this? <coughs> Aw, dude, I've been wanting to talk about this for like a year, with the same title and everything. I was there, man. <coughs> Yeah, I know I should have just made it sooner then. No need to sass me. Not like I'm blaming it on him, jeez. Ugh, whatever. I'll just talk about the Tenorman kids since that's all I really cared about in the first place. Also, Blooms, with all due respect, I haven't watched all of your video on this yet, so I could write the script without any possible influence. I'm sorry, I'll buy you Wendy's or something. As mentioned in the intro, the first time the identity of Cartman's father was really brought up was the season 1 finale. Cartman's mom is a dirty- Yo, can I get demonetized for reading this? The episode sees Cartman running all over town, trying to figure out who knocked up his mom on the night of the drunken barn dance, pursuing as many leads as possible. Is it Chef? Chief Running Water? Mr. Garrison? Well, as Cartman discovers, it could actually be anyone. Because Lyanne has gotten around during her time in South Park. After some more shenanigans involving a DNA test and the crew of America's Most Wanted, the episode claims that Mrs. Cartman is actually intersex and that she knocked up another woman. Eric's father is his mother. And his other mom is... Um... Uh... Side note, revisiting these episodes for this video had to be the first time I watched very early South Park since, like, elementary school, maybe? Middle school at the least. And I forgot just how goofy these seasons were. South Park has always been silly. That's part of why I love it so much. But remember how often Cartman would just yell at this poor little cat half of the time for no reason? Thank you! Yeah! Actually, remember the intro for season 5 that was aggressively 2000s and ended with that live action explosion? Fam, why the fuck did you do this? I think fans always remain skeptical of the answer they gave us around Cartman's dad. Or were just straight up unsatisfied. So the team behind South Park decided, you know what? Fine. Let's give them something better. Something crazy. And they waited for the perfect occasion. Man, I'm really bummed that 200 and 201 pretty much have no shot at reruns or making it to streaming. They've been removed from most releases of the Season 14 DVD and Blu-ray, and because of their inaccessibility to the public, there's a very low chance that these episodes will ever be referenced in-universe. Which really blows, because of the big twist with Cartman. For the uninitiated, the 200th episode saw Tom Cruise assemble nearly every celebrity that Sal Park has ever made fun of to sue the town with a class action lawsuit providing some pretty on the nose meta commentary. That town thinks they can say whatever they want about people and get away with it. The only way Cruz is willing to drop the lawsuit is if Stan is able to introduce him to the prophet Muhammad, whose appearance would be dicey to say the least. As depictions of Muhammad have become much more controversial in the years since South Park's take on him in season five, Super Best Friends. So in the context of South Park itself, 
Muhammad can no longer be made fun of. A power that any celebrity who's been mocked by the show would kill to have. And that power is exactly what Cruz is after. Wanting to harness Muhammad's goo, yes that's what I said, so that he too can evade being made fun of by South Park ever again. Cartman uses his hand's alter ego, Mitch Connor, who disguises himself as Jennifer Lopez, to infiltrate Tom Cruise's home with a plan of their own. Mitch wants to steal Muhammad's goo so they can sell it for a ton of money, trying to coerce Cartman into doing his bidding with the topic of his father, his real father. But Mitch, Cruz, and the celebrities of South Park aren't the only ones who are after this power. As soon, another opposing force makes their way onto the scene. Okay, so, Ginger Kids is a season 9 episode that explores Cartman's beef with gingers. You know, the episode Ed Sheeran hates. Cartman pretty much treats all gingers like vampires, but in his own racist Cartman way. So the boys play a prank on him by giving him a makeover in his sleep, gaslighting Cartman into thinking that he himself is a ginger. And how does Cartman respond? Does he have a moment of clarity, realizing that he shouldn't treat people who look different from him so poorly? No! He forms the Ginger Separatist Movement that promotes ginger supremacy, planning to eradicate every non-ginger on Earth. And somehow, after realizing he's not actually ginger, as far as he knows, Cartman's actually able to sing his way out of the situation. But I guess all the ginger kids kept getting bullied after this episode. Pandemonium breaks out across South Park, as the town finds themselves in the midst of violent attacks from both the Gingers and the celebrities, the latter of which pulled out the big guns, Mecha, Mecha Barbara, Barbara Streisand, Streisand, who goes on an unstoppable rampage. Also, she killed Pip. That's where he went. Cartman confronts Mr. Garrison over his father's true identity, forcing Garrison to reveal that the results of the DNA test were tampered with in order to preserve the truth. So Cartman returns to Dr. Mephisto's lab for answers. But just as Mephisto starts to explain the situation, he's interrupted by the arrival of Stan, Cartman, Kyle, and Kenny. Kyle proposes cloning Muhammad so that both the Gingers and the celebrities get what they want, which Mephisto oh, right. seems pretty game for. But then the Gingers pull up, kidnapping the boys and Muhammad. Cartman's separated from his friends as he's brought to an eerie yet familiar setting, a chili con carnival hosted by the leader of the new Ginger Separatist movement, the one and only Scott Tennerman. Scott Tennerman Must Die is an iconic episode from season 5 that doesn't really need much recapping. Cartman buys what he believes is his first pubes from high school freshman Scott Tennerman, only for the boys to explain that pubes grow on their own and Cartman's been scammed. After a constant back and forth of Cartman trying to get his money back and eventually just trying to humiliate Scott in general to level the playing field, the nine-year-old orchestrates what's still his most heinous plan to date, a chili cook-off. While Scott believes Cartman's trying to set him up with a free pony ride, where the pony would try to bite his wiener off, Cartman's true intentions are much more sinister, manipulating Scott into sending his parents off to their own demise, where Cartman would then take their dead bodies and cook them into chili, feeding that chili to an unsuspecting Scott, who has a complete breakdown once Cartman pulls back the curtain. Yeah, this is still one of the most out-of-pocket things I've seen in a TV show. Embracing his Joker arc, the deranged Scott Tennerman reveals that he spent a long time in a mental institution after Cartman fed him his parents. Time that he spent plotting his revenge. But along the way, he uncovered a shivering truth. Gathering everyone who once lied to Cartman into the same room once again, Scott forces them to explain the reality of the situation. Lyanne had an affair with a Denver Bronco, getting pregnant with Cartman as a result. But because the Denver Broncos were having a really, really good season that year, it was in the team's best interest to cover this all up. A plan that backfired horribly, as Scott mentions that his dad used to play for the Denver Broncos. It doesn't take much longer for Cartman to put the pieces together. His dad was Jack Tennerman. Cartman orchestrated the death of his own father and then proceeded to cook his father into chili, which he fed to his half-brother. Because Cartman is a psychopath who will go to any lengths necessary if it means winning a petty rivalry.
Scott intends to exact his revenge by having Cartman eat a mystery chili of his own. Lord knows what's in there. But is thwarted by the arrival of the Super Best Friends. Not wanting any smoke from the Super Best Friends or the celebrities, Scott leaves on a jetpack, never to be seen again. Except at the end of one of the theme songs and this one Xbox 360 game that no one played. In the aftermath of this wild adventure, the boys try to console Cartman as he processes that major bombshell. But they're dumbfounded when Cartman reveals that he's only hung up on the fact that his dad was a ginger. He doesn't really care that he killed him and fed him to his own brother. Cartman, come on! Mitch manages to cheer Cartman up with the rationalization that although he's half ginger, he's also half Dever Bronco. Which is pretty cool. What makes this the greatest plot twist in all of South Park for me is that although it clearly wasn't something they planned from the start, it still recontextualizes Cartman's actions in a meaningful way. When things blow up in his face, it's usually in that immediate episode. But Scott Tennerman, and to a lesser extent the Gingers, was infamously one of the few schemes that he walked away from unscathed and free of consequence. So for all of this to finally catch up with him through an insane domino effect, though oddly rewarding to see as a viewer. Not to mention, it's a way more satisfying answer to the mystery of Cartman's father. And although he isn't really faced by being the one responsible for his dad's death, it still led him finding out something he would never want to hear, that he's got ginger in his blood. Despite how twisted this whole thing is, I do find it neat that we can go revisit these episodes with an understanding of the bigger picture. I also love how many moving parts are involved for this twist to work, dating all the way back to season one. As someone who's always been big on shows of long-running narratives and continuity, ever since I was a kid, I remember being absolutely blown away watching 201's only broadcast on television. Honestly, Matt and Trey need to just bite the bullet and bring the storyline back in some way. Everything with Muhammad can stay in 200 and 201, I get it, but it truly crushes me that so many fans don't even know about this plot twist because the episodes it's in are inaccessible on streaming, reruns, and DVD releases. I feel like Matt and Trey are sleeping on some golden storytelling opportunities with Scott and Cartman, so hopefully they wake up sooner rather than later and actually do something with it. But that's just my opinion, my own thoughts, and I want to hear yours. How do you feel about this development? alongside episodes 200 and 201. Did you think it was brilliant? Some real 40 chess? Or did you think it was kind of lame and maybe even stupid? Should Cartman's relation to Scott come back into the spotlight, or is it better off forgotten? Let me know in the comments down below. And hey, how about giving us a follow at RoundTableVids and at AlfredClocks on Twitter and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please start a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Peace.